Award-winning actress Marsha Cross is perhaps best known for her role as the perfect homemaker on the TV series Desperate Housewives. We remember her. She was diagnosed with anal cancer about a year and a half ago. After Cross completed radiation and chemotherapy, she reached out to our Dr. John LaPook to share her story. John, kudos to her for discussing something so personal. Yeah, and Gail, among other things, Marsha Cross is hoping to break down the taboo surrounding anal cancer. I first met her at a stand-up to cancer fundraising back in 2010, and at the time, her husband Tom was being treated for throat cancer. Thankfully, Tom and Marsha are now both doing well. But it turns out their cancers are likely related. Just a reminder, this will be a frank discussion using words that might make some people uncomfortable. I was so not thinking anything was wrong because I didn't have any symptoms. And she gave me an exam and she kind of came around and said, well, I just want you to know whatever it is, it's curable. Where you're just like, what? What are you talking about? It was during a visit to Marsha Cross's gynecologist that a routine digital rectal exam revealed a cancerous mass. Why do you want to talk about this now? Because I know that there are people who are ashamed. You have cancer. Do you have to then, like, also feel ashamed, like you did something bad, you know, because it took up residence in your anus? I mean, come on, really, there's enough on your plate. I love the way you've embraced the word. Anus, <laughs> yeah. Even for me, it took a while. Anus, 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 anus. You, know, you just have to just get used to it. I'm feeling better now. Besides, every bake sale needs a tart. Best known as Brie Vandekamp on Desperate Housewives, Marcia spent eight years serving up and showing off her many talents. How would Brie have handled the diagnosis? She wouldn't have told a soul. And how many people are just like that around many, the country? Many, right many, many people. Breaks my heart. According to the CDC, human papillomavirus, or HPV, causes more than 90% of anal cancers. The same virus can also cause cancer of the cervix, genitals, and throat. It can spread from one person to another through sex or just by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Cross says her annual rectal exam saved her life. You can say, okay, this is embarrassing, this is uncomfortable, and by the time you know it, it's, it's over, and you've, I mean, lots of things in life are not mm -hmm. fun, but you can bear it. During six weeks of radiation, then two weeks of chemo, Cross leaned on her closest friends. What I had was a bevy of girlfriends. I called them my anal angels. Your anal angels. Yeah. That's, I love that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I kept saying, if this doesn't kill me, it's like the best thing that could have ever happened because the experience of being loved like that, it blew my mind. Back in 2009, as her twin daughters were turning two, her husband, Tom Mahoney, was diagnosed with throat cancer and began treatment. I would be like working all day. I would be in the emergency room at night. Plus I had two toddlers. So it was a, it was a busy time. A grueling regimen put Mahoney in remission. But what Cross didn't know then was the same type of HPV that likely triggered his throat cancer can also cause cancer in the anus. In 2019, an estimated 8,300 people will be diagnosed with anal cancer. However, the types of HPV that most commonly cause cancer can be prevented by the current vaccine. Marsha, right here. Come on. As a parent, Cross was relieved to learn early immunization can protect the next generation. My girls don't know it, but they're, they're up for their first shot at the end of the school year. They're 12. 12. It's been about a year and a half since your diagnosis. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I feel back to normal, though. It's a new normal. I don't yes. think I'll ever take it for granted. OK, I'm the girl who goes to the bathroom now, and I go, yes, you better great what you, my body can do. I'm so grateful. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Statistically, anal cancer is on the rise. Marsha hopes that sharing her story will help others get up the nerve to talk with their clinicians about what may be embarrassing symptoms like rectal bleeding, a lump in the area of the anus, or a change in bowel habits. Shoot, better to be embarrassed and alive. But listen, we all have one, but nobody wants to talk about exactly. it because you get such a graphic image in your, in your mind. So what kind of doctor do you go to? To get this well, that's checked. the big thing. You know, we reached out to five different societies, including ones that handle people in internal medicine, OBGYN, family practice, and there are no official recommendations wow. about a rectal exam, about who should get it, when it should be done. Uh, there's this thing called shared decision making. That's good. That means, you know what, we're kind of punting it to, to the doctor and the patient, the clinician and the patient, talk about it. And I think one of the things that's happening, even the pelvic exam is no longer recommended for everybody routinely. So 
with Marsha that was picked up on routine mm -hmm. digital exam, and, and you I pointed out digital out. meaning with your finger, the, di yeah, the yeah, digital. You mentioned yeah. that the HPV vaccine can prevent this kind of cancer, potentially. Uh, are young people getting those shots? You know, they, they are increasingly, but it's still just under 50%. Uh, wow. And so it's something, you know, it's part of this anti-vaccine or he vaccine hesitant thing that's going on. I think the punchline here is people have to feel empowered to talk to their yeah. physicians, yes. talk to their clinicians about it. And these societies, I think it may be time with the increasing uh, incidence of this problem to go readdress these guidelines. Dr. John LaPook, thank you very much. we got to go here.